as Action News continues its round the cock clock coverage. Yeah, some round the cock uh, clock coverage of storms because storms need to be taken seriously. They want everybody who doesn't have a reason to be outside uh, in inside their homes. You heard from the mayor who said a number of people haven't left. That worries them. So if you've arrived here from the Conspiracy Cats video, you'll know we're going to be talking about the Coriolis effect and how the Coriolis effect causes counterclockwise movement uh, in the Northern Hemisphere and clockwise movement in the Southern Hemisphere. And when I say movement, I'm talking about storms uh, and hurricanes. So let's have a look. Right, so here's the Earth which spins from west to east. Now, <clears throat> the angular velocity of any point on the Earth is always going to be the same. So, for example, you know, if I'm here or here or here, it's always going to take... 23 hours and 56 minutes for the Earth to do one rotation, to do the 360 degrees. But the linear speed of any point on the Earth is going to be different. Why is that? Well, speed, as we learn, you know, really early on in school, is distance divided by time. What's the distance that this point has to travel? Well, it's the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r, or pi d. So our linear speed is now 2 pi r over t. What that tells us is... As the radius of the Earth gets smaller, uh, as I move up or down from the equator, or north or south from the equator, as the radius changes size, the linear speed will change size. And at the equator, where the radius is biggest, that's where I'm travelling the fastest, which is in the region of about 1,000 miles an hour. We're not going to calculate that today. It's going to travel slower up here, slower here, and much, much faster around about here. Well... Why is that relevant? Well, if I'm sat on the equator here, I have, a, I have a velocity. I am moving in this direction at a certain speed, around about, like we said, a thousand miles an hour. But if I suddenly start moving north, I don't lose that, um, that velocity that I had. I don't lose that. So when I start moving, and I'm maybe the air that's moving above the ground, Suddenly, the earth beneath me starts spinning more slowly than it was here. Or, I'm moving left to right faster than the earth is moving left to right. So I start to appear to do this. I start to appear to, if you like, overtake the ground underneath me because I've still got this, this velocity that I had on the equator in this direction. So anything moving north is going to make this sort of curved path. Anything moving south will do the same. It's carrying that west to east um, momentum, if you like, with it, or that velocity. Now let's have a look at something that is travelling in the opposite direction. Something that's moving, let's say, from this point here, south. Well, when it's at this point here, it has its own velocity from west to east, which is going to be smaller than the velocity of the any point on the Earth further south, uh, at least up to the equator. So when it starts moving south, the land underneath it starts moving west to east faster than this is. It can't keep up and it appears to fall behind. And the same will be true for something here moving north. As it moves north, it appears to fall behind the rest of the earth, um, or appears to curve, because it's not moving west to east as fast as the land underneath it. So why should we care? Well, let's have a look at this in the northern hemisphere. This is uh, moving from the equator in a northern direction, and this is uh, uh, traveling from the north towards the equator. What I want you to imagine is these are almost like uh, fingers that are flicking a coin, okay? So maybe I've got a coin here and I'm flicking it in this direction, and it's gonna make it spin, and it has a very, very similar effect on the earth. Now I'm not a meteorologist, you know, I'm not going to be using all the correct uh, weather terminology here, it's just a, a, an analogous explanation. But as the air moves down here and this air moves uh, up here, it spins the air, it has that effect of spinning the air in the centre and what we get is a counterclockwise movement. So any hurricane, uh, any tornado has this movement in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere I'd have the opposite effect and I'd get a clockwise um, motion. So that science is solid, it's sound, and it's proven, um, and pretty much beyond question. Unless your name is Ali B, and you're a YouTuber who makes very, very lazy debunking videos like this one. Okay, here we go. I don't know why I'm fucking doing this.
as you can see, North Pole, wind's going that way, wind's going that way, wind's going that way, wind's going that way. Coriolis debunked. Okay, finished. Hope that helped. Well, let's have a little look. Again, in the Northern Hemisphere, we'd be expecting something like this. Now, if I was stood here, I would be feeling wind in this direction. If I was here, I'd feel it in that direction. If I was up here, I'd feel it in this direction, or this direction if I'm here, or this direction if I'm here, or this direction, or that direction, or this direction, or this direction. See what I'm getting at? These weather patterns and wind patterns happen over a vast, vast area. You are going to get wind in different directions all the time. But even with me saying that, I am vastly, vastly dumbing this down. There is a whole science behind meteorology and, and weather patterns. It's not as simple as you just literally looking at the internet and saying, oh, it should be this direction in the north, this direction in the south, therefore uh, I've debunked it by looking at some satellite photograph with no explanation whatsoever. Um, do some research, do some learning. Weather patterns are very, very complicated. They're affected by all sorts of things. The Coriolis effect is really just a, a deflection of the air as it moves and on a large scale causes uh, the counterclockwise movement in the north and the clockwise movement in the south. But it's complicated stuff.